everyone needs to know how to make a great basic loaf of bread. Today I'm going to show you my simple one loaf white sandwich bread that you can pull off in your own kitchen very easily. This was originally a video I formatted for a Facebook Live, so it's a little bit different than what I normally show here on the channel, but it has all the steps. And I feel like if I can give you all the steps in real time, you'll be more successful when you try it on your own. So check it out and let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. going to start out by activating our yeast and I know this is the part that scares everybody to death but I promise it's not that bad. In this cup I have one cup of lukewarm water. Now temperature wise if it's warm enough to put a baby in it's completely safe for your yeast so please don't stress over this just a cup of warm water. And then I've got my yeast here now this is active dry that's the kind there's two kinds active dry has to be activated in water and then instant yeast or fast rising yeast just gets dumped into your flour so if you have the other kind you can let me know as you're watching the video but we have active dry here that's just what I always use just give it a shake to get it down out of the way so it's not getting oh and also let me tell you this check the back for the expiration date and make sure that it's still in inside its expiration date if it's outside its expiration date please don't use it because yeast is a living thing and if it's expired it's very likely not going to rise okay so yeast goes in the water just like that and then just take a fork and just give it a gentle stir Sometimes I don't even really stir it, but it'll just kind of clump up on the bottom and do a couple things there for a few minutes and don't worry about it. Okay, so this is going to sit just like this until it starts to foam. And I'm going to leave this here so that I can show you what that looks like. And then in a second, I'll show you when it, how we'll know it's ready to use. So I'll be back in just a second. So now, do you see these little things popping up right here? It's been about four, four and a half minutes. If your house is cool, this is gonna take us a little bit longer to do, so be patient with it. But you see these, see this stuff kind of coming up right here? It's thicker and doesn't look like the rest of the cloudy water over here. That means your yeast is alive. And if you sit here and watch it, you'll see it kind of go bloop. It'll bubble up from the bottom and you'll get more and more and more of that. So as soon as you see that happening, go ahead and start on your recipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside. And I really wanted you all to be able to see. So I'm gonna try and get my bowl all centered up so everything is right. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I put in next. This is prop, really probably not proper technique, but we're going to do it anyway. So in goes our yeast mixture. Make sure you get it all out because there will be some kind of lingering in the bottom. Just get that in. And then, now we're going to use an egg here. Ideally, your egg should be warm. The warmer your ingredients are, the more quickly your yeast is going to rise, your bread's going to rise. So ideally, your egg should be warm. I'm going to put him in. Sorry for all the focusing issues. My camera doesn't like me moving around under it so much. So our egg goes in, and then we're going to do a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Now, you can leave this out if you want to, but it's, it's pretty necessary if you ask me. I think you can tell if you leave anything out of this recipe. Now, and you all know me, so I'm using um, organic cane sugar here. This is one of those times that you just can't get away with coconut sugar or any of those alternatives. You can use honey if you want to. That's okay. That's fine. So if you do honey, you're going to do just a tablespoon or so. Don't do, don't do three tablespoons because honey is much, much sweeter. Okay, after the honey, we're, or after the sugar, let's do a couple of tablespoons of oil. And then I'm using avocado because it's flavorless and it's what I like. But you use whatever you've got on hand. Not, not olive oil. That's probably not one you're going to want to use because it has too much flavor. And then the other thing I want to put in is some salt. And I'm going to do three quarters of a teaspoon. Of course, I'm using... Uh, pink Himalayan sea salt here. You must, must, must put the salt in here. So if you're using table salt, three quarters of a, of a teaspoon is fine. Okay, so we got our, li our liquid ingredients in. Now we're going to do our flour. So really quick, I'm going to slide this back. Now, you may not have a bread flour on hand. I love King Arthur, but I, it just really makes your bread a lot lighter if you use a bread flour, but all purpose will work here. Don't not make it just because you don't have bread flour, but that's what I keep. Okay, so in our cup here, I want to show you real quickly, really quickly how to measure flour. You can't scoop it in the bag. So what you do is you take a spoon and you scoop the flour. Ooh, you make a mess, but you scoop the flour out. I'm trying to keep it so you can see. You scoop the flour into the cup. And if you don't know how to do this, it's always good to learn basics like this. Because if you scooped it from the bag, you'd pack it. And in America, like what I would really tell you to use is a digital scale. But in the United States, people are like, no, we don't use digital scales. That's terrible. Well, that's the only way to really accu accurately measure flour. So you level it off. And I'm just going to kind of do this scantily so I don't make a mess on everything. But if, if there were extra on the top, you just scrape it off. And that's one cup. Okay. So... 
We're going to do three and a half cups. Now I'm going to start with just three because based on your weather, if it's very humid, your flour will hold more moisture and you don't really know if you need all that flour just yet. So I have the extra half cup hiding out if I need it, but for now let's just stir this together with a fork and let's see what it looks like. Bread is really something that takes practice and patience. I think I made my first loaf with my mom when I was about nine and I'm 40, gonna be 41 in a couple of months, and so I had a lot of time to practice. Your bread probably won't look like mine. Mine doesn't look like my, my husband's you know, family. Her, his grandmother was making bread up into her 90s, and my bread was never like hers. So just be patient with yourself and, and just keep trying. Now this is pretty wet still. I feel like I need that other half cup of flour, so let me get some. I'm gonna put in just a few tablespoons of it. And eventually it's gonna get kind of thick, so I'm gonna, probably gonna have to use my fingers. Don't be afraid to put your hands in there. See how it's kind of wanting to ball up in there? That's a good sign that it's about right. You don't want it sticking to the bowl. And so I'm gonna take, scrape it off there and just kind of give it a little work with my hands here in the bowl. It's still decently sticky, but that's all right. This is kind of how I want it, about like that. Okay, so this is step one. Now all I'm gonna do is just put a light coating of, I have some spray avocado oil here, but you can do it with just regular oil, tap it on your fingers, just, just whatever you want. Just tap it on the top. That's gonna keep your bread from forming a skin while it's rising. And I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna put a piece of plastic wrap over the top or you can use a dish towel and I'll let this sit for an hour, give or take, until it's doubled in size. So we should expect to see it up around the rim of this bowl here. Now, if your house is cold, my house is like 68 degrees probably, somewhere between 68 and 70, this may take a little bit longer than an hour. Watch your food and don't watch the recipe so much. That's where a lot of cooks make the mistake. They think, oh, it's been an hour. I gotta, you know, I gotta do something with this right now. So just, just watch the rest, just watch the dough. And so in, a, in about an hour, it should be significantly larger and then we'll move on to kneading and get it in the loaf pan, which is very easy. So be back in just a little bit. Well, look what we have got here. It is doubled. It looks beautiful. You can see that, see? Almost all the way up to the edge of the rim. Easy to tell that it's nice, nicely risen. It's springy and it's time to go ahead and get it ready for the loaf pan for our second rise. So what we're going to do, we're going to put some flour down on our surface and this is, I think, where people sometimes want to go a little south on things is because they want to See how that's stringing out like that? That's a sign that our gluten is nicely developed in our dough. Um, they want to add too much flour during this step. So I want you to try to resist that temptation to put too much on this. And you know, you're really not gonna be able to hurt it, I promise, but. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna knead this. Now I have, a, I have a little bit of flour on our surface here and I'm just going to start, I've gotta make myself a little pile of flour. Let me see where I can put it where you can see it kind of over here. So I've got a little extra in case I need it for anything. But there's the technique for this is really not per you don't have to be perfect, but I'm just folding it over, push it forward with my hands, fold it and push it. Okay? You do not have to do this perfectly. You you're not gonna ruin it by doing it any other way. So we're gonna we're gonna work this. Oops, I hit the camera with my head. Okay, let me move it over. Now we're just gonna connect I'm folding, I'm putting the heels of my hands in. So what we're doing, I'm folding it over itself, kind of in half, putting my heels and my hands in it, and I'm pushing it forward, okay? Then I'm gonna bring it back, turning it a little bit. Same thing, fold it over, heels of the hands, push it away. Now, we're gonna do that until this dough is very elastic and wants to spring back. So I can already feel this just after a few turns that it's kind of getting a little firm, like almost stiff. And that's what you're building up. So if you're using all-purpose flour, you may take a little longer to do this than with a bread flour because a bread flour has a higher gluten content than an all-purpose flour does. But I want to show you how long it takes to do this. Now some people, see how it's not sticky? 
It's nice and smooth. Now, some people who are really fancy at this will pull theirs and look to see if it will hold what they call a window pane test. Mine's not there yet, so we can go a little more if we want to. And the window pane test is when you can kind of stretch the dough and you can see light through it without it breaking. So that's how you know that you've got your gluten kind of thoroughly built up. A lot of people don't need their bread long enough. And you're really not gonna hurt it as long as you do it by hand. Um, if you get the idea that you're gonna use, see, just a little flour, not very much. It's starting to get a little sticky. If you get the idea that you're gonna use your hand mixer or your stand mixer, I mean, like a KitchenAid, it is possible to overwork dough if you do that. But by hand, it's a whole lot harder to do. So we're just gonna keep pushing this out. I'm just kind of letting it drag across the board as I push with my hands. Not hard. And I'm not gonna speed this up because I want you all to see how long it actually takes. So see, it's starting to get a little sticky there. So we just add a little flour. That might have been a couple of tablespoons total that I have in that little pile on the corner. So I'm just dragging it in. If it feels sticky, I just kind of pat on it. Pat a little in. Don't dump cups and cups of flour on this. Okay, let's see where we are. That's a pretty ball of dough right there. So if I pull this up and stretch it, I can see light just a little bit. See that? Just right in, right in there. You can get a little bit of light before it starts to break. That's pretty close. Now we could give it another six or eight turns maybe. But you know, don't be surprised if it takes you, you know, five minutes of kneading total. That wouldn't surprise me a bit. If you're using all purpose, it may take you closer to seven or eight minutes to get it up where you need it to go. But what this does is it builds up the gluten structure. When you build up the gluten structure, you get a lighter, um, what do I say, more defined, I guess, crumb to the bread. It's not nearly as heavy, so, um, so you wanna do that, okay. So I'm just dragging in flour from wherever. That makes me happy. Now let me show you how to get it in your loaf pan. So I have a nine by five by three inch loaf pan and this one is by USA Pan and they are my favorite in the whole wide world. You don't have to grease this because these literally don't stick, everything falls out of them. But I'll just give it a light coating. If you're using your grandma's old loaf pan, it's like black and Man, you're gonna have to coat this thing down in a lot of oil to keep it from sticking. But that's that's covered. Don't use butter to grease your pan. It will burn and it will stick. So absolutely use some sort of vegetable oil, avocado oil, of course, is what I always go for. Okay, let me show you how to shape a loaf. Now this, this dough also makes cinnamon rolls. So if you wanted to use this for cinnamon rolls, you could roll this out in a square, put butter and, you know, sprinkle some cinnamon sugar on top and this would be ready to go just like it is. You can use this to make dinner rolls. You can make cinnamon raisin bread. You can make anything with this. So to make a loaf, what I usually do is push this out to kind of make, well, see how it's real springy? See how it's pulling back on me like this? This is a sign that my gluten needs a rest. If you've ever bought pizza dough that was refrigerated and you, or frozen even, and when you thaw it and you try to use it and it, you try to roll it and all it does is fight with you, this is a sign that the gluten strands, we've built them up enough, but they're, they're wanting to like knot up. So what we need to do is give this dough about five minutes and just let those gluten strands kind of relax down and it won't fight me so much. So I'm gonna let this sit about five minutes before we try to shape our loaf so it's not so contrary. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to shape it. Sometimes you have to let your food do the talking. It's given me a signal that it's not ready. So we just wait. It makes everything easier if you don't fight with it. So be back in a second. All right, so I gave this a few minutes and you can see as I pull on it now, it's not fighting me nearly as hard as it was. See how much softer it is? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of work this into a rectangular shape. It's not anything exact. I'm just gonna kind of tug on it till I get it. Yeah, like this. And then I'm gonna roll it up. Yep, we're gonna roll it like a sausage. So we're gonna roll this up and get it to here. Look how pretty that is. Now it's got a little, mine's got a little air bubble in it right there. So I'm just gonna pop that out, not a big deal. Okay, then bring your loaf pan back in and just drop your, drop your bread right inside, just like that. Now, and it's gonna to need to sit another hour roughly, okay? I want this bread to be a little over level with the pan. So I'm gonna to try to show you. See, we've got 
a good couple of inches of space there. So I want it maybe about an inch up above the pan and once it gets there, it's thoroughly risen, then we'll put it in the oven. So sometimes the only thing that happens is that you, if you under rise your loaf, you'll get a little bit of like a cracking around the edges of it after you take it out of the, out of the pan after baking. And then if you over rise it, it will collapse in the oven. So we're gonna just go if you were to you know rise it many inches above the top of the pan it might it might collapse in the oven but as long as we just go within an inch or so of the top of the pan we're going to be just fine so this is going to sit for about an hour and when it's ready i'll show you what it looks like um, i'm not going to put plastic wrap on the top of this because if i did um, the plastic wrap could stick and then if it sticks and you pull it off you've lost all of your air out of your bread and it's going to go and collapse on you so i'll just put i'm just going to leave it open what I'm gonna do. <laughs> we'll leave it just like this. Um, I'll be back in about an hour and show you what it looks like. A little over an hour later and we are so close to going in the oven so you can see that it's very much doubled in size and I very carefully want to see if I can tip this over so that you can see its height. This is probably not a smart idea but you can see I'll take a picture. I don't trust myself to do that. It's um, kind of jiggly. Can you can you see how it jiggles? Like it's got lots of air in it. <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. We're going to bake it at 400 in the center of that middle rack until it's golden and puffed up about 15, maybe 20 minutes, something like that. And then um, we're going to let it cool completely. If you slice it when it's still hot, it tends to let all the moisture escape and your bread will be really dried out on you in just a couple of days. You won't be able to enjoy it for very long. So we'll give it, you know, plenty of time to cool, maybe an hour or so. And then I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. The bread was in the oven for about, I did 25 minutes just for good measure to make sure it was done all the way through. And I wanted to show you a trick. And people ask me, of course, they're gonna to wanna to know how do you know when your bread is done? Well, I mean, you can tap it on the bottom. You can take its temperature. It should be around 200 degrees internally if you have a thermometer that you can do that with. But really, it's, I don't do any of those things. I just trust my oven after all this time. But I would say easily, you know, 25 minutes is gonna be just fine. But I wanted to show you what I do for getting the top, because right now, you can hear that the top is kind of you know firm and crispy so I take a stick of butter we are butter eaters in this house and I just run this over the top while it's still very very hot I love to hear it like drip down in there and start to kind of sizzle when it hits the pan this will actually soften that top up and and make it really not not so crusty for you so I just rub that on a lot <laughs> and then I'm going to take it out of the pan here it needs to cool about 10 minutes give or take in the pan before we put it on the the cooling rack but I'm going to go ahead and do it for you anyway it's not been 10 minutes start by loosening just take a knife and go around the edges shouldn't need much help these USA pans are so amazing and fabulous they typically don't need a lot of encouragement to get them out Let's see, because it is screaming hot. Okay, woohoo! Look at that. Isn't she beautiful? Look, you're gonna be able to do that in no time. So this is a really a pretty properly risen loaf. You don't see a whole lot of splitting around the edges right here. If you see a, a picture of a loaf or you find bread that's got a great big wide split right here, it just needed a little bit longer on its rise. That's what usually happens with that. We're gonna let this cool completely and then I'm gonna cut it open for you and you can see what the inside looks like. All right, it's the moment of truth. You've put in your work and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna slice this. So always use a serrated knife and make sure your bread is mostly cool. Mine's still a touch warm, but let the knife do the work. And oh, oh my goodness, isn't it beautiful? Perfectly risen. I mean, it's just exactly what you're looking for. Nice, even even crumb in there. Yours may not look exactly like this, but it's okay if it doesn't. Don't worry about it. It will taste delicious. So you can wrap this in plastic wrap and put it in the freezer. What I actually do with mine, because homemade bread's gonna go bad in about, about two days, it's gonna be pretty dry. That makes you realize what's in store-bought bread when you, when you see that. So wrap it in plastic wrap. Sometimes what I'll do is actually cut my slices and then wrap the whole thing and freeze it and then just take out a slice at a time and either put it in the toaster allow it to thaw on the counter, whatever I want to do with it. Um, sometimes I'll even make sandwiches with it and I'll make the sandwiches frozen with the frozen slices and then make the sandwiches, stick them in the lunch bag. And by the time they get to school or to work, the bread's thawed out and it's just fine. So it'll last in your freezer wrapped up really well. 
six weeks, four to six weeks if you wrap it really, really well. But on the counter, you're only going to have a couple of days with it. It probably won't last that long, and I hope you really enjoy it. This recipe can actually be found if you'll follow this video right here, which is for my easy yeast rolls. It's the same bread, just there's a wasp on my hand. <sighs> Scared him. <laughs> It's the same bread. It's just made into a loaf instead of into, into individual rolls and baked up. So you can find the recipe up on the Feast and Farm website. And if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Talk to you later, guys.